Welcome to an introduction to chemistry brought to you by Parkbench Tutors. For more information about Parkbench Tutors, look us up in Facebook or visit parkbenchtutors.com. This is the first of a series of short tutorials introducing you to organic chemistry. So, what is organic chemistry? Well, it's the chemistry of carbon compounds. They are very common synthesized carbon compounds are used in everyday products such as dyes, drugs, fibers, many other things and carbon is in fact uh, the chemistry that's used in life. So carbon has atomic number six, it has four electrons in the outer energy level and those electrons can be shared to form covalent bonds. Carbon can bond to other carbon atoms to form chains or circles, right? So it can bond to the halogens, to oxygen, and to various other elements. And this is why it's so important in the chemistry of life. The simplest are hydrocarbons. These only contain carbon and hydrogen. And the simplest one is methane, which is written as CH4, where we can see that carbon with a valency of 4 has four hydrogen atoms joined to it, so CH4. And you can see that the electrons are shared. Hydrogen shares its electrons with the carbon, so carbon effectively has a stable configuration of those eight electrons there, and each hydrogen atom, by sharing one of the carbon atoms, has a stable configuration of two. The empirical formula is not often used in organic chemistry. More often we use the structural formula. And the reason for that is because compounds can have the same empirical formula, but they may in fact differ in other ways. So here's an empirical formula, C2H6O, and that could be one of two compounds. It could be CH3OCH3, the oxygen in the middle joining two methyl groups, and that would be ether, or the oxygen could be on the end as part of an OH group, in which case it will be ethyl alcohol. And these two substances, ether and ethyl alcohol, have very different properties. Alkanes then have a general formula, CnH2n plus 2, where n is the number of carbon atoms. And the general name given to all the alkanes is the paraffins, or the paraffin series. You have one carbon atom, it's methane, CH4, two carbon atoms, ethane, C2H6, and then three carbon atoms, propane, four carbon atoms, butane. Now we've written the carbon atoms there as a straight chain, but we could write them, uh, uh, portray them in other ways. But if, as long as they were all joined together in that way, it would still be butane. So we can sum those up, methane, ethane, propane, and I've written n-butane and n-pentane because I have want these labeled correctly. Those are the first in our series. And you'll note there's something common about the boiling points there. The boiling points are increasing the longer the carbon chain is. And you'll see when I got to n-butane, I said there were things called structural isomers. In other words, there's more than one way of writing it. And similarly with n-pentane. Alkanes are found in petroleum and in natural gas, and in petroleum they are extracted by fractional distillation. Methane is particularly important because it's for 90% of natural gas. In the lab you can form methane by heating soda lime with sodium acetate. You get methane and sodium carbonate formed. If you burn alkanes, then the products are carbon dioxide and water. So 2C2H6 plus 7O2 would give 4CO2 as a gas plus 6H2O, also in a gaseous form. Alkanes will react with the halogens so that hydrogen can be replaced. For example, CH4 plus H plus Br2 gives CH3Br plus HBr. That's just replacing one of the hydrogens. Now, in here we've shown what happens if you replace more than one. So the simplest one on methane is if you replace only one of the hydrogens and you get methyl chloride. If you replace three of them you would get chloroform and if you replace all of the hydrogens then you get carbon tetrachloride. And note they have other names as well. Methyl chloride is monochloromethane 
trichloromethane for chloroform, trichloro meaning three chloride chlorines, and tetrachloromethane with the four chlorines attached. So let's just look at how we've started to name these alkanes. The parent here is methane, so the group that it forms is methyl with a YL. And so the compound will be methyl, in this case bromide, because we've replaced one hydrogen with a bromine. So we use something which is called the UPAC system, and it's based on the carbon chain of the parent, and it, we look for the longest carbon chain. And UPAC stands for the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. So let's look at some naming some compounds. Now this one has one, two, three, four, five, six carbons, and if you look at it vertically, there's a chain of three. If you look at it horizontally, there's a chain of four. It's the chain of four that we're interested in. That's the longest chain. So that means the name is based on butane, and you can see then that if you go to the second carbon, there are two CH3 groups attached, so that makes that a dimethyl part. And since both of them are attached to the second carbon atom, we're going to write that as 2, 2. So if I put all that together, we've got 2, 2 dimethyl butane. Another example of that, in this case, we've got, depending which way you look at it, a chain of 3 or a chain of 2. So we'll be looking at the chain of 3, that's the longest one. And you can also see that there's an iodine there. So the longest chain being a chain of three carbon atoms, the name is based on propane, and there is a CH3 group, and a uh, that's a methyl group, and there's an iodine, and they're on the second carbon atom, so we're going to name it 2-iodo-2-methyl-propane. Final example here, fairly straightforward one, this is a four carbon chain, so it's going to be based on butane, the OH group, which is actually an alcohol group, means that the terminal name is going to end in OL. And the position of the group is on the second carbon. We count it nearest to the end. Uh, now it's from the shortest position from the end of the chain. So it's butan 2 ol It's possible to join carbons in ring structures. The simplest would be a ring of three. And the simplest member with the carbon that's being uh, all connected with hydrogen being saturated is cyclopropane right if all the bonds of carbon are single bonds then it's saturated but if you get double or single covalent bonds then it's not it's unsaturated that ends our first short session uh, brought to you by park bench tutors narrated by david hopcroft thank you for watching and for listening we wish you success in your studies for more information Visit us on Facebook or look us up parkbenchtutors.com. Thank you.